that you've got to do is get through seven of the best clans in the game. So let's just see who has what it takes between INTZ and Darkest Muzan, Lady B. Yeah, we've got Wei, the MVP, kicking it off for Darkest Muzan, and this really is this is a grudge match of grudge matches, but we saw Darkest Muzan make it to the finals. Are we going to see the same fate for them again? History maybe repeating itself. But first, kicking us off with the Zap Quake Witch attack. I've seen some incredible stuff coming from witches these days, but this is uh, one of the few that we're actually seeing for this particular war, setting up with a nice opening with that Zap Quake combination and the heroes to help with the path. The queen's going to work along this out edge here. I was a little bit surprised we haven't seen witches before this attack. It's, witches are really strong right now in the current meta, uh, but it seems like a lot of the clans are favoring dragons or even Lalo. Not so many ground attacks, but we do have a herd of witches, and look at all of those Larrys spawning in. This queen is walking, and they're making their way to the town hall, and notice those little open corners. That's going to allow the skeletons from the witches to weave in and out of this base really easily. Yeah, and this is great base recognition, and this is why we are seeing a huge slew of witches coming into play with the open edge base meta right now for building. But the problem is, is that we see the witches working along the outer edge. It would seem like a problem if the king wasn't taking the lead, clearing out that path, but because we have these open corners, the witches can easily, like you said, weave in and out. The queen working her way in the core. This is massive value for the queen to take on, but we need to see the support of these witches coming along and it looks like they are starting to finally make their way back around. Although, I worry because we've lost out on the king now here. Ooh, those witches just soaked up a giant bomb. He does have hog riders coming out of that siege barracks now. That queen's still walking really strong. If she can get this evil artillery down, that is going to be massive as she finally locks onto it. The hog riders are going to be paired up with the world champion. This is looking for a really strong start by Wei as that queen is taking down that wizard tower. She still has her ability. The world champion still has her ability. Lady B, this is looking like a really good start here for Wei. Oh, this is looking great, especially with that queen ability intact. She is going to make first contact with that scatter shot. So this ability is going to be very important. But look at that one healer hanging on to the queen's dear life here, trying to speed up some health. And the queen needing to force this ability as she comes into contact, wipes out the scatter shot. We've got the king who may eliminate her, but no, he won't. The queen beats out. And we've got a beautiful push from cleanup of these witches and skellies that op queen charge getting out the splash damage taking down the multi the eagle artillery and that back end scatter and the witches have a herd of skeletons to finish off those last two buildings and it's a three star there for way what a beautiful attack mass witches paired with a queen walk what a beautiful thing i was surprised we hadn't seen any to this point well we show right there how powerful an attack like that can be against the bases that have those open corners yeah, and I love the navigation of it. Using the queen to cut in with a lot of different styles of attacks, we see the queen along the outer edge. And with this component, she started there, but got pushed in from the witches with the king being the one to take the lead. So those witches could do that nice loop around through the base. And that's this new meta that we get to see, which is really interesting. Something that Darkest Muzan seems to have definitely taken note of and mastered. But are we going to see more of this coming through from them or are we going to see some additional push with some of the update new troops that came like the super minion and the super valk yeah, with this latest update, I feel like the meta is so open right now. We've seen so many dragon attacks. The hybrid, I feel, is still really strong. We've seen a lot of good Lalo attacks, and now we finally see witches. Don't forget about the Yeti attacks, but here we go with something. We've seen dragons, but we haven't seen drag bat. We got 13 dragons, six bat spells. This is going to look for a strong re recovery here from Renan of INCC looking to bounce back and get a triple of their own starting the king off on that left side looking to push in and take out that air defense and maybe if he's lucky he can get that single target in front of the king goes out but the world champion is in there trying to get these defenses down free spell comes down to save her yeah, Raynon coming in. Uh, he's coming in from their first match that they had in the first qualifiers as their player that went perfect. 
Uh, so let's see how he goes for this team here. Great funnel starting from the Royal Champion. Not enough to make that connection to take out the scatter shot. But this isn't always key to eliminate those because the Drax can take on quite a bit of a beating. But I do see that the Queen's being placed down just above the 3 o'clock side of the base here to make this connection, which does mean we have a bit of a wide spread out for the Dragons. But with the Blimp sailing across to take on the Town Hall, this could potentially reroute it, redirect it, especially with the Queen moving in. The Blimp used paired with the Warden's Immortal Tome. Gonna make sure it's gonna get the Town Hall down there. It looked like the Royal Champion did not get her Seeking Shield off as the Scattershot took her down as she was getting ready to throw it. May have tried to get that Scattershot down on the left side. Now gonna have to use the Bat Bomb right on top of it. So here come those Bats. They're gonna work through. Remember, the Bat's favorite target is gonna be any defensive structure. So they're gonna go to that uh, single target and then they're gonna go to the Wizard Tower. But you do have to keep the Scattershot frozen because right now it is gonna take out some bats! Yeah. Oh my goodness, Lady B. Devastation! Oh, that is not what he was hoping for, especially because we didn't see that scatter shot go down. And yes, it does come back into play. Bat bombing in that safe zone because these bats do great against defenses, except when it's splash damage. And that's where you see them completely fizzle out. This is a type of strategy when you're using bats, whether it's for a drag raid or a Yeti bow bat, or even uh, coming along with a Lalo, you need to ensure that you have enough freezes or enough backup like a Royal Champion or ice golem to do some tanking for those splash damage features and as we clearly see the scatter shot really doing in those bats and eliminating any chance of rain and coming through with the triple in this first match yeah it had to burn through all three freezes quickly as there was a wizard tower down there along with that scatter shot remember the scatter shot has a really good range so you got to get it frozen early but the bats just weren't able to push through there as we do have these archers cleaning up here and it is still going to be a very respectable percent as we we're closer to that 86, 87 mark with the storage and that elixir collector going down. I think the archer tower should take out these few archers right here, but that one should get down the elixir collector. So we'll get the 87% two star, but Darkest Muzan started off really strong, setting the tone early with a three star and INCZ unable to respond there, Banks. Yes, they were. Renan from INTZ only managing to bring in an 87% two-star. And uh, obviously, Darkest Muzan putting their strongest foot forward, it would assume. The MVP from last year's World Finals way managing to bring in the triple. Renan did say prior to entering into this weekend that one of his best attributes is staying calm. Maybe he was a little bit too cool as a cucumber going into that attack. Maybe he needed a bit more ferocity behind that attack there, Bash. Yeah, just not quite enough. And I think that Royal Champion just kind of messed him up. She got kind of smashed in between two defenses and didn't get to throw her shield, which kind of hurt. But here we're going to have 25 plus coming in for Darkest Muzan. And we are starting off with a blimp. And do we have Yetis in there? Yes, we do. Yetis paired with a Valkyrie. Going to look to take out that single target Inferno and pull off the Clan Castle so that this Queen can charge in here and take them down for this hybrid attack, Lady B. Yeah, I like the addition of this blimp to come in to help pull the clan castle uh, because it's keeping the queen, it's taking away a lot of the defensive line, keeping the queen nice and safe as she works through this hound trying to eliminate it. And this is a great point that we see 25 plus here doing some cleanup, shaping up the base while this queen is taking the time to take down the hound. It can be time consuming. And when you deal with hybrids and various other types of attacks, you do worry about that time factor even with the addition of this 20 troop space to the game. But a beautiful push in as the queen now moves along, we're gonna see her with easy safe passage taking on that multi IT and we still have a single wall breaker to get her in, push her through and lead her to the enemy queen king and take on some impact of that scatter shot up at 1030. The queen now has access to the town hall from that super wall breaker. The other super wall breaker popped out and just opened up that left compartment. I think he wanted it to go all the way towards the town hall, but throwing down the jump spell to get further into the base, looking to get down that eagle artillery, looking to get down those expos. And here come the hybrid as that town hall falls. The hogs, the miners, all gonna push through and work around the outside. Meanwhile, the queen in the core here is taking down the enemy queen. She's gonna look to get to that eagle artillery as fast as possible, but she's gonna be distracted here by the defending king. Here we go with the hogs and min hogs and biters rather along the right side, Lady B. 
Yeah, that was a great connection to get the queen into that court, dropping the jump, forcing it through because he didn't make the connection that he wanted. But the key thing here is getting to see the queen potentially taking on some impact from the scatter, though the tornado is messing about with things. We do still have the royal champion up, uh, champion up hanging on to this ability. Free is holding off that scatter to ensure that the royal champion can get her ability off, get more value out of this. And a lastly placed freeze here gives more impact to what remains. We still have a bit of time to worry about, but this is looking clean for 25 plus. He's got enough left, but does he have enough time? With 30 seconds out, I think he's gonna have another triple for Darkus Muzan. That queen was the MVP. A very nice queen walk right there. Queen charged into the base, and a great use to have a backup jump spell there. He was ready, just in case that super wall breaker didn't go in. He had the jump spell ready to get that queen in there, and there we see it, the last two buildings going down, and it is another three star for Darkus Muzan. Yeah, this three star leading them strong and Darkest Muzan taken out, as you mentioned before, in the very first qualifiers by INTZ. So with this grudge match that we have going on here, it seems Darkest Muzan is not letting down, not letting this get to them. And they want to ensure that INTZ drops this time. But will they be able to keep that momentum moving along because it was dropping down to the bottom that maybe gave them the fight that they needed to pull to the finals or will they move strong? But for now, we have Luke coming through for INTZ, bringing us through with more drag bat action. And we do have this combination of the single lightning spell, single quake, zap quake combo to help with the royal champion and her seeking shield. As you pointed out, that single lightning and earthquake, it deals enough damage to a single target inferno that when the royal champion throws her seeking shield, it will just take it out instantly. So you don't have to worry about the royal champion getting locked onto and taken down by the single target inferno. That's why you see this from these players. I'm sure a lot of new guys to the, the scene are like, wow, why would you bring one lightning and one earthquake? That's why. It's just enough damage for the seeking shield to get through there. King's going to be able to get the town hall down, but the queen is going walking a little bit here on the left side. And here comes that quake and that lightning combo over on that right side compartment setting up this funnel really nicely for the dragons. Yeah, maybe not enough of what he wanted out of his queen moving along, but still gets a lot of impact through this. We may potentially see the queen actually serving as additional cleanup as she works behind the dragons, providing they're the ones that take on the impact. And there aren't too many ground items that take her out, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems she is going to be potentially knocked out fairly quickly here. But the pathing has moved along fairly well. I do still worry about that single IT and the expos that did not go down. We'll see if this one dragon can create enough path Oh, maybe not with this entire Tesla farm in the core. So it's really up to using the bats and those freezes for the back end to hang on to this one. Remember, he still has six bat spells there. And with not too much splash damage, the three freezes should be enough to get through here. Oh no, freeze the missed the wizard tower. Woo, quickly gets it down. Luke, don't do that. You're gonna, you're gonna stress me out, man. Gets the freeze down to freeze for the bats, and they're gonna have a clean path through here. And this is looking like the response from INTZ. Gonna have an extra freeze spell. Not gonna need that even a little bit. Look at that herd of bats fly through. Beautiful attack here by Loop Zero. Getting through with the drag bat. That's exactly what INTZ needed to stay in this match as these last few buildings are going down. That was a beautifully ex executed drag bat there, Banks. It was beautifully executed. A stunning attack right there from Loop Zero from INTZ, answering back against Darkest Muzan, who are looking extremely dominant coming into this war. Uh, previously, in the first qualifier, in the group stages, INTZ faced off against Darkest Muzan, and they won. So Darkest Muzan looked like they're coming back strong and trying to come out of this group stage victorious and going into the winner's bracket tomorrow there, Bash. Yeah, I was worried about that freeze, but he got the second freeze down quickly enough there, Lady B, to save the attack. Oh, that is so stressful, but really nice pathing on the bats there. Yeah, it really was. And we talk about what you're looking for when you're planning these bad attacks. And that really is knowing that you have enough spells for the back end. And he really did overcompensate with that swag, plus the stone slam slammer that was tanking along. But we do have Darkest Muzan coming around now two for two in their attacks and B bringing us through with more zap quake drag action and spreading out, dispersing these spells so he can pick up some air defenses along the outer edge to help help create some better pathing and eliminate some potential damage to these dragons early on. 
You said zap quick drags and this gave me flashbacks of the old like Town Hall 8 zaps where you would drop down two lightning spells and an earthquake to take out two of the air defenses and fly your dragons right in at the rest of them. And that's what we saw B do here right here. Take out two of the air defenses, take down an archer tower and set up a great path for these dragons to push through the middle of the base. Plenty of rages, plenty of freezes. And remember, we still have the heroes to be deployed. So they'll help keep the dragons on path here as we see the king and queen on the right side. And we'll have that royal champion coming in just a little bit later. Yeah, this delayed use and drop down to the bottom side of the base to keep them away from any potential issue with the clan castle coming in as the dragons take it on. It gives a nice push and additional value for the king and queen to work through, though we do see the dragons overlapping them here. We'll see if the stone slammer is going to be enough. Ideally, we wanted to see the stone slammer helping to take on some of the lead of the scatter shots. And unfortunately, we don't see exactly the way we had hoped for this to go. And that was that clear straight path into the double scatter shot in Eagle Chamber. But with the queen still alive, hanging onto the ability with the royal champ and her ability, maybe, just maybe, it could try and re-navigate around. Yeah, just not quite enough. The sweepers were a problem in there. And you, you mentioned it, those scatter shots did so much work. Still does have a few dragons up in the royal champ. Oh, just kidding. The royal champion is taken out as the queen's ability here. But with a single target inferno and that scatter shot well tucked away, this is going to be tough for the last two dragons, baby dragon and the queen, to finish this base off. So a little bit of a misstep here for B from Darkest Muzan, leaving the door up for, open for INCZ. If they can get a three star with their next attack, we're going to be back close to neck and neck on this one, Lady B. Yeah, that opening is not something that you want to give to INTZ in any way, shape, or form, considering the war that they had against Darkest Muzan in that last matchup, and considering the fact that INTZ had picked up the very first uh, perfect war of that particular war and of this year. So I, I'd be very worried at this point for Darkest Muzan giving any sort of slack to INTZ here, but we do see some more percentage moving along. Dragon just picking up, but not hitting that 85% mark, just under where we typically like to see. Yeah, it was really close there. 84%, I believe we're pretty close on percentage for both of these clans. If INCZ can get another triple, we're gonna have an exciting finish to this war. But that one just quite didn't ever get going. It seemed like he wanted to push right through the middle, but those air sweepers had different ideas, pushing those dragons right away from the core, right away from the scatter shots, and that really caused the destruction of that attack. But this one, it's all gonna be on Bernal from INCZ. He's gonna come in with a zap Lalo and try to put his team back in the ball game here, Lady B. Yeah, we'll see if Bernal can do it. He is probably one of INTZ's top hitters, and he is one that the entire team sees as one of their clutch hitters and uh, and most looked up to at this point, and it's because we see him doing phenomenal stuff. The Zapquake opening up a nice connection. We still have the RC moving along. We still have one remaining lightning spell that I do wonder if it's in case of a headhunter, but it can be used to help redirect single ITs and also take out anything additional, just take on some impact here to move things along. But it's up to the king and queen. We've got a nice opening here to get to the town hall. Let's see if the queen moves her way back around. Yes, she will. And that's where we get to see that lightning spell coming in and zapping out the headhunters. So the king and queen have safe passage here. It wanted to get as much value from the Sui as possible. So what he did there, he's dropped the poison to slow those troops down. So they all got in one area and with one fell swoop of the lightning spell, taking them all down. And this is setting up a pretty nice path for the Lalo. However, I don't see him being able to get to the scatter shots, which is gonna be a problem. Leaving up two scatter shots and a multi-target. Oh, hold on, Queen's going, go Queen, go! Can she get it down? There she goes. Queen gets down the scatter. Just as I say, two scatter shots are up. One's down, Lady B. Yeah, that, that queen heard you, but as she said, nah, -uh, I got it covered. Comes in and this is phenomenal with Bernal bringing in the Stone Slammer to take on the lead here. These loons get demolished very quickly by the splash damage of the scatter shot. That is why you want your Stone Slammer or Hounds leading the way. So we get that nice opening moving in. Dragon opens up. We'll see if it's gonna be enough to keep working through to get their way to the Royal Champion, but we still have a Headhunter in play. And as these loons continue to swarm through, this is a good opportunity to drop it because there's no ground targeting defenses now. This is looking phenomenal. 
he threw a headhunter in with, before he hit the warden's ability to take down the queen, and the other headhunter did enough damage to slow down the royal champion that she's gonna be able to be finished off here by the minion and the dragons. And here we go, Bernal from INTZ is gonna finish this base off, and this is gonna be the three star they needed. This is gonna be anyone's ball game going into these final two attacks from each of these clans. What an exciting matchup! Bernal coming in clutch when his team needed it the most. Just a few more structures. He does have a couple minions on that dark elixir storage there on that left hand side so that won't be an issue 22 seconds is plenty of time and that's exactly what intz needed the three star actually putting them up on percent now banks Yes, exactly what I was just about to say. Up by a fraction of a percentage right now. What an impressive attack in INTZ. Just like that, it gets flipped. And uh, Darkest Muzan are now tailing and are to, going to get something out of this now. They're going to have to put up a few triples, I think, or at least some really high percentage two stars. But we can pretty much say that the war is now level pegging, Lady B. Yeah, level indeed, but just up ever so slightly. This is what we were talking about. You can't give an inch to INTZ because they will take it a mile. But Kartik, can he get this one done? We've got more Zap Quake Drag. This is certainly meta right now taking on this entire corner of the base. Doesn't quite, oh, there we go. Makes a connection to take down the scatter shot, but doesn't quite get down the queen, which is no problem. We just need to ensure there's enough value from this royal champ to help take this on. But this is a beautiful opener in the amount that he's taken out. I agree with that. That was a really nice use of the lightning spells and the earthquake spells to weaken up that single enough. Didn't drop, you know, the dedicated uh, one lightning, one earthquake combo on that single, rather getting out the single and the scatter there and the Royal Champion finishing it off. And here we go. We're going to set the pathing for the dragons to come in from the bottom side of the base. And this is looking like the start that Kartik needed, looking to put his darkest Muzan team back in the ball game. All the dragons are in. We got a few more balloons trailing off. Right now we do have that Stone Slammer selected. Warden's ability popped right there a little bit earlier than I think we would normally see on this one. That was a pretty interesting choice to use the Warden's ability right there. Yeah, Warden ability early could hurt him coming through. And let's point out that we still have the Queen alive, though. The Dragons will take her out, but it does deter one of the Dragons moving along the outside of the base. We're going to see if there's going to be enough push coming in, enough from the Dragons to take out that Town Hall. They do have quite a bit of hit point to take on the damage, but we're going to lose a lot coming into the core of this base. So it's really up to the King and the Stone Slammer here to get it down. Warden with that clutch hit to eliminate it, but we've lost a lot of dragons along the way. Those dragons made me so nervous. They were spinning all around, taking down the Clay Castle troops, finally getting down the Town Hall right there with the Warden on the assist. But here comes a Lava Hound out of the Clan Castle, which is going to distract not only the Queen, but it's going to distract those last few dragons as we have air defense remaining. We got Expos pounding away. Oh no, this Lava Hound could stall out. We got a couple minions for cleanup. Can Karta get the push through here with the Queen's ability? Oh no, we got spinning circles. Lady B, what do you oh. think? Have we got enough to finish this base off? Now I'm worried about the time factor. We have the Queen ability, which is going to be key here, but the problem is is the storage is up top now we do have those flaming sword barbarians from the champion kingskin is that going to be enough heat enough fire to burn their way through these storages and allow the queen what she needs to take on the defenses archer tower is already picking them off it could come down to time because of those storages but it looks like he's got just enough steam to get this one done and try and keep darkest muzan putting the pressure on to INTZ. That's a nice attack there from Kartik. A little bit of luck there from the Queen getting through, finishing off those last two buildings. Oh my goodness, what an attack on that one. It was Kartik just managing to secure that triple just, just about right at the end, right at the edge, a fraction of a uh, of time left at the end there, Lady B. Yeah, right at the very end. You you gotta worry when you see th a few things go wrong here. You know, go early, early Warden ability, getting into the core, the spinning around of the dragons, but he really handled that like the pro that he is. 
I think being in these qualifiers multiple times really does help you work your way through. But you see that stone slammer really helping to keep the navigation moving along. And it helps keep that queen alive, taking limited impact so she can hang on to the ability. And it really helps come in clutch in the end. I was so nervous about that one. The dragons were going down so quickly in that course, spinning around, fighting off the clan castle. And then that last dragon raged up with the warden just enough to finish off that town hall. That one could have easily been a one star, but turns into a three star. What a crazy attack. And now we're going to have Selino coming in for INTZ. And we got some more Lalo. This seems to be the favorite of a lot of these players right now. Yeah, this uh, this definitely is a favorite of the players. Happy to see more Lalo coming around. And we do have the Zap Quake combination. This is very interesting because even Judo pointed out, typically we don't necessarily want to see this Town Hall targeted, but he's using it to bring the Royal Champion in, get that damage so her and the Seeking Shield can take it out. This is massive value just from that RC alone, which lends itself to use the heroes, the King and the Queen, in a different compartment of the space. That was a great opener. Now we're gonna have the King come in here. We do have balloons trying to take out some of these Teslas to set the funnel and get these heroes going in. If you notice, we got the wall breakers opening up that compartment completely. We're gonna have access to the Eagle Artillery, a multi-target Inferno sweepers. This is exactly what Selena was looking for from the start, but the queen is gonna have to fight this king by herself. She can handle it, but with the assist of the headhunter, it'll alleviate a little bit of that pressure because the king hits so hard, she's gonna have to pop her ability as that Eagle Artillery targets her. Oh my goodness, Lady B, is she gonna hang on through this Eagle shot? I don't think oh, so. Oh. No. Oh, I wanted to see so much more value out of this one, especially with that opener, with the elimination of the town hall. The clan castle, imagine getting that eagle down. Now that leaves it as a huge threat to the back end of this base. The good thing, though, is that we're coming in. We're going to see the warden ability, which could potentially keep everything safe through the impact of these scatter shots. And it, it, because they're so close range together, we have one focusing on the hound combination up at the 12 o'clock side. We get maximum value value out of that, but this freeze can then potentially be used for the back end eagle to hold off if it poses too much of a threat of these remaining loons here. Oh, the balloons were right on top of that scatter shot, but decided to go left. I thought they were going to go right on that scatter. Got to get this multi down. That Igor until it gets frozen here. But notice we still have a multi-target Inferno. I think he wanted to get that out with his heroes, but didn't have quite enough to get through here. And this one's going to start to fade fast. And INTZ is going to be behind after this one, as there's not going to be quite enough. Uh, if he would have been able to get that multi down, I think this attack is a completely different story. May have had enough to get the three star, but the evil artillery remaining up the whole time is always devastating here, Lady B. Absolutely. It's really unfortunate to see a plan that has so much potential from the start go just a bit wrong and fizzle out. But you got to appreciate the effort here. And this is the type of hard hitting action we expect to see in these qualifiers. But any slip up at this point for this caliber of players and teams is really detrimental. Yes, uh, Selino, Selino from INTZ, unable to bring in the triple, 91% two-star. He's the main, the primary base builder for INTZ, but they needed to secure that triple because now if Darkus Muzan may manage to bring in another triple, that's it. They will be, INTZ will be going into the lower bracket and they're going to have to battle it out to stay in the competition. But uh, they do, they have kind of saved their best for last. Darkus Muzan opened up their attacks with Wei and INTZ will be closing it out with Marinol. So that is still to come, Bash. Oh, baby, what a finish. But Ty for Darkest Muzan can actually put this away right here with a three star. Look, they are up on percent also. So really high percentage two star could be enough. Let's see what he's got as we have mass E-drags and balloons here, Lady B. Yeah, mass E-drags and balloons, this combination, I always say, you got to feel pretty confident that you're going to make the connection needed. And this is going to be a phenomenal push because we do get to see that nice chain value. But now, Bash, this is a lot more predictable with the update. 
That's right, the update changing the E-Drag just enough so if the buildings are equal distance apart, the same distance apart, they're gonna chain to the highest hit point building. But here we go, those E-Drag, it's working through here. Rage jump, he's working through the backside of the second star is secure. That Stone Slammer is gonna pop, but we do have a single target Inferno and air defense on the top side. This base is kind of spread all over, or the attack rather, is spread all throughout the base. As we have the King and Queen on the left side, we got Dragons on the top side, we got the Royal Champion coming in at the 12 o'clock position. Can he finish this one off for a three star Lady B? That freeze, oh my goodness, over the scatter shot in the core absolutely held what we needed to see in the core of the base here to take that out. We've got the RC hanging on, but the problem that still remains are the two single ITs here. This was a beautiful way to try and redirect, but what we are going to have to see is hanging on to this queen ability as long as possible, and he's hoping that his queen is going to try and stay out of its range, but no dice here. Do we have enough health out of this one E-Drag and the baby dragon to get through the remaining single IT so much potentially in his favor oh, here. That's hanging on by a thread. A triple. Oh, oh my goodness. This I think the death looking. damage from this Electro Dragon should be enough to get it down. It's gonna be the E Dragon's gonna go down here, but check this out. One, two, three. Oh no, it's not. The Queen needs one, one shot. shot. Can she get the three star? Queen clutches up and she gets taken out by the single target Inferno. Oh my goodness. That is gonna be the closest attack I have ever seen what? in the history of Clash Bash. Oh my, my I'm almost at a just loss fell of out of my chair. Oh my goodness. That was uh, That was waiting on every single step of the way. That was just all on the fly here. But I gotta say, in the core of the base, using the freeze just perfectly timed to get that scatter shot down. So much could have gone wrong if any of these small things didn't oh happen. <laughs> oh my goodness, that queen, she barely got that shot. I thought the lightning damage, the death damage from the Electro Dragon pounding away would be enough, but it wasn't. The queen had to get that final shot in. And unfortunately for INTZ, they are not gonna have a shot, but we've spoken to this many times before. Marinol is gonna look to finish really strong. You don't wanna just throw in, throw in the towel and give up. You wanna finish strong because they're gonna have to play a little bit later today in an elimination matchup against Space Station. So you wanna finish strong and build that momentum into the matchup a little bit later, Lady B. Absolutely, and this has been quite a table turner for Darkest Muzan getting their revenge against INTZ, but we do expect to see Marinol finishing up strong. Definitely another one of those solid hitters for INTZ and just in general in Clash of Clans. But we have Marinol starting us off with that Zapquake combination, which opens up great pathing for this hero opener. King's going to take the lead here. We've got the clan castle luring, so really you need this king to do that lead position, do the tanking. Poison plays perfectly to hold off the super minions as a queen whose range stays back and behind and works her way through to help pick off some of those structures as the king finishes up his tanking. I do like seeing these super minions on defense. It's a little bit of a change of pace, especially if you're going with a little bit of a Sui hero. So you can almost like bait the Sui towards the town hall and then have those super minions in there to take out, you know, like the king as he works in here. But here we go with the Lalo, throwing in that haste preemptively and the hounds are on the air defense. This is looking like a strong opener for Marinol, getting that town hall down. Now, can he finish it off with the Lalo through the back end here? Yeah, we had a nice lineup start here with that pathing that was created. Easy push coming in towards the center of the base with the positioning of the loons, especially the way he wraps them around the outlying defenses and structures at that stone slammer in a perfect position that you have to be mindful of. So it tanks for the scatter shots, for any splash damage, and it continues its path moving along into the back end of this base with a haste to sweep it through and finish off. Bash, it looks like we've got some swag spells here, potentially in the end though, maybe a little bit risky if he doesn't drop them coming into the wizard tower on the back end. What do you yep. think? Plenty of troops to get through here, plenty of time. Uh, gonna go for the full out swag here, swag out the haste and the freeze potentially. Uh, but that's part of building that momentum into the next attack. But again, unfortunately, even with this amazing three star attack from Marinol, INTZ is going down to the lower bracket a little bit later on today, but check that out. A swag freeze and a swag haste. That's exactly how you want to end the war there, Banks. 
Yes, you do. Marinol with an impressive display right there at the end. Just obviously unable, even with a triple, to push INTZ through into the winner's bracket. Darkest Muzan take the win. They will be going through into tomorrow's matchups, and INTZ will have to fight once again in the lower bracket against Space Station Gaming. A brilliant performance from both clans. However, Darkest Muzan managing